Do you know uh, how old your turkey is? Or or was, <laughs> for that matter? Does it even matter, the age of the turkey? I mean, what are some of the things you look for when you're choosing a bird? What's the best way to cook it? Well, we're just going to off the cuff. We'll be talking turkey today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code, every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Hello. Welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code, everyone. Uh, this is the weekly show for the methods, the techniques, the insights into better food and cooking. We're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern. And if you're looking for any past videos, you can go to the archive on Facebook, facebook.com slash chef.todd.more slash videos. There's the schedule there. Easy to remember. Tuesdays at noon. Thursdays, we do this really cool, cool cook and chat along event now at 6 p.m. If you haven't seen that, be here on my Facebook page Thursday at 6 p.m. East. If you're looking for photos of the things that I'm cooking that maybe I don't make videos about, always doing something, go to Instagram.com, Chef Todd Moore. Did you catch the garlic shrimp episode from Friday, I think that was? I just totally made up this appetizer. It was awesome with some sourdough, crunchy sourdough bread. I just made it up because I'm a carefree cook. I create my own recipes. I bring friends and family together. I learn every time I cook because I create my own cooking style. I'm practicing pro methods and you wind up really loving your cooking is what it's about. And that's what I love about Tuesday, my favorite day of the week perhaps, because we all get together to explore all the elements of cooking that can make you truly carefree in the kitchen. I I'm not talking about finding the elusive perfect recipe because that doesn't exist. You're, you're more likely to stumble across a unicorn than you are to find a perfect recipe. I'm talking about empowering ourselves with the underlying concepts, the techniques that give you the confidence to create your own uh, dishes. It gives you the ability to fix ones that ha don't come out the way that you imagine. It it's empowering and it's a lot more fun. It's a more rewarding way of cooking because when it's your creation, it can never be wrong. You know, I always say you set yourself up, oh, this is Coco Van, and you go, eh, it doesn't, it's not. no, but this is chicken a la Todd, it can never be wrong, right? No, nobody knows what's in chicken a la Todd. So with the holiday season approaching, here actually up upon us, it's even more important to make the right decisions when it comes to the holiday meal. And that's what I'm hoping to help you with today. Just change some of this confusion in a very light conversation. But first I've got a, what am I for you? We're talking about the holidays. What is that thing? <laughs> huh? <laughs> Instead of what am I, it should be, Hey, what is that thing? That's what we should call it. And what's the fleshy thing that hangs off the turkey's nose? Do you know the name for it? Tell me in the comments section below what that's called. All right, now, a lot of cooking ahead of us, right? In the coming weeks. And even people that don't cook all year long find themselves baking a pie, making their football sausage and cheese dip. They do something. Everybody does something. And I always say that cooking can be fun and rewarding, but you know, it can also be really frustrating and it can be very costly if you don't make the right decisions. So let's talk turkey today. Um, Cause it's a tough time of year for turkeys. I, I feel badly for them. I feel badly for the turkeys the way I feel badly for the crabs in the summer. I'm just a softy that way. And if I were a turkey, I know I would hide until January. <laughs> just pretend I was somewhere else. So before we get into all this, I've got a special bonus for you. I've got a way for you to connect with the grandkids or the nieces and nephews or something like that around the table this year. Are you ready for some holiday turkey jokes? 
that you could tell a four-year-old? <laughs> All right, good. Because if, if you laugh at any of these jokes, it says something about you. It, it says you have a kid's sense of humor, and I like that. All right, so here we go. Hey, why did the turkey t cross the road? Uh, because he wanted people to think he was a chicken on Thanksgiving. Come on, a four-year-old would, would kill. <laughs> that would kill at the Rafi concert, right? <laughs> uh, hey, uh, uh, why, what did the turkey say to a computer? Google, Google, Google. No, that one's not as good. All right, well, you pick. You, you pick one. Um, what, what did the turkey say to the hunter this time of year? Quack, quack. <laughs> All right. Maybe they're not as good as I thought they were, uh, but they're for four-year-olds around the table. Um, what do you get when you cross a turkey with a banjo? A self-plucking turkey? Eh, that one's not so good. Uh, <laughs> I'm working on new material right for the holidays. What do you get when you cross a turkey with a ghost? A poultry geist. All right, <laughs> we'll stop with that <laughs> for now. All right, so when you're going to shop for your turkey, it's not just size of turkey. We're going to talk about this whole X amount of minutes per pound thing. This is the one, this is the question that just comes up every year. And you know, if there were an answer to this question, you would think there would be an answer to it. Why every year are people asking how many minutes per pound on your turkey? But there's a lot more that goes into that because the first thing that we have to do is talk about some of the classifications of turkey, the, the words that are on the turkey or are advertised in the turkey and they're classified. So if you're looking for a free range turkey, don't immediately think that they've got a huge range to run around. All these words ha have specific legal and, and USDA meetings. So your free range turkey is not home home on the range. It has some access to the outdoors. This is usually an area that they can go to and they come back inside. So <clears throat> a free range turkey, I wouldn't say is immediately better than some other turkey. You just need to ask these questions. Um, it, it has more to do with what the birds eat than so many of these other words. So you could be indoors or you could be outdoors, but it's what you eat that's important. If you have some access to the outdoors, but you're not eating grubs and, and uh, uh, bugs in the soil and, and, and things like that, um, then it's not a natural diet. You're still running inside and being fed a feed or corn. Uh, don't mistake the fact that a fresh turkey you think has been slaughtered and then brought to your table. A fresh turkey needs to be frozen. It's a little bit like uh, some fish and tuna and things that are frozen on the boat. Um, they need to be frozen for the bacteria's sake. But they're, they're kept, the legal definition is kept at 26 degrees Fahrenheit or 3 degrees Celsius or above. To me, that's below when water freezes. So you're hoping that the turkey is dressed really well. You're hoping that it's dried very well because one of the things that can destroy the turkey meat is the expansion of water in the freezer. So when pretty much any kind of meat, uh, water in the muscle tissue, water expands when you freeze it. You can imagine it tears the muscle tissue. Then your idea is to, to defrost it correctly so that kind of returns back. What destroys so many things in the freezer is the freezer burn you get of the self-defrosting freezer, the one that goes up and down, up and down in temperature as the water expands, contracts, expands, contracts, that kind of thing. So a fresh turkey uh, is going to be from a better source, but if you see it at the Costco, it's probably in the frozen section. Let's talk about USDA grading. Uh, if you've ever taken any of my culinary school classes, uh, you see the soap box that I get on because the USDA is so overburdened. Uh, they have like one inspector for five states, you know, something like that. So don't mistake a USDA grade, a grade A or even like a, a prime on beef, anything like that. This does not have anything to do with flavor. It is only the carcass quality. So an inspector, if he does come by your plant, maybe once a year, once every two years or something like that, he's going to look at the quality of the carcass. They don't make him a Thanksgiving dinner and then he tastes the, the, the <laughs> and gives it a quality, right? So this says nothing about flavor. It says nothing about breeding. It says nothing about uh, uh, really how, what the bird was fed. It says nothing about what it was treated. It is simply after the bird is butchered, 
what does the carcass quality look like? It has to do with the bones. It has to do with the fat layer. It has to do uh, with cartilage, uh, the, the uh, flexibility of cartilage. It's inspection, things like that, that really inspect the animal, not the way that it was raised, not the way that it was fed, none of those things. So a grade A turkey does not taste better than... Well, you're not going to find a grade B turkey, but it, 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 just because it's grade A doesn't mean it's the most delicious turkey. Really, what you want to do is look into age classifications. So an age classification on a turkey says a lot more about the quality than a, a USDA grade or a, a word like free range or a word like fresh that may not immediately mean what you think that it means. So let's talk about some of these turkey age classifications because you may see, and this is for a lot of poultry also for chicken, a word like fry or roaster. And now you think, well, I have to fry it or roast it. Not necessarily the case. It's just the name of a bird that is under 16 weeks old. Now, you're probably not going to find a fryer roaster turkey. It's a small, a much smaller bird, a lot less fat, but now a lot more tender. Okay, so the younger the bird generally, the more tender the meat is going to be. And the inspection on this is the cartilage, the flexibility of the cartilage. The older the bird gets, the more brittle the cartilage gets, the smaller the cartilage gets, and so on. Then you might look for a young turkey. Okay, this one is more tender. Like I said, you might look for a young turkey. Now, a young turkey is five to seven months old. This is still tender, but it's got a better fat layer, right? It, it is, it's matured enough uh, and pulled. Poultry, you know, you don't get marbling, right, in turkey and chicken like you do in beef or, or pork. Um, poultry stores their fat, birds store their fat as a layer under the skin. You've all seen chicken fat, and it, it's got that white sh pre-rendered schmaltz underneath, right, that yellow chicken fat. You, you don't get nice marbling on a chicken breast, okay? The, so the, the fat is always separate from the meat in poultry, but a, a bird that has a nicely developed fat layer is gonna cook a little better for you. Um, it's gonna have a little bit more flavor. Now, young is tender, but older is flavor. So you get a little bit more maturity, but you also get more movement. And the more the muscle moves on an animal, on a bird, the more oxygen, the darker the meat. Some say the more flavorful the meat, but some people don't like the dark meat. You get, you get an idea. This is why a younger bird is gonna give you tender meat that isn't as dark. An older bird is gonna give you darker meat if that's the type of thing that you like. Turkeys don't fly, so the breast meat is white. Turkeys do walk, so the leg meat is dark, like chicken, okay? Uh, where are we? Oh, a yearling turkey. A yearling turkey is about a year old, a year old, under 15 months, they say. Now we're going to get into a bigger bird. So if you are looking for a certain amount of turkey to feed your family and you want it to be one bird, which it doesn't have to be, by the way, you're probably going to look for a yearling turkey or the next one we're going to talk about because this just allows them the time to grow. If you find a young turkey that is real big, it's a Dr. Frankenstein turkey. They've like injected it with something, things like that. So it's a tougher bird. There's even more fat, but it's a larger bird and many people would say a more flavorful bird. Last one is a mature turkey. And if you're really looking for that 17 to 20 pound turkey, this is more than a year old, over 15 to 16 months old. It's, it's a tougher bird for sure. There's more fat. It's more more coarse skin. There's a thicker fat layer on it. And remember, the older the bird, the tougher the meat, the larger and more flavorful the meat, potentially. So with this information, now you can start to wonder, figure out how many people you're feeding your family. You're going to want to come, come up with a portion for that. And hopefully you've taken to heart some of the things that I've talked about in portioning. And you know the average person at your dinner is going to eat four to five ounces of finished turkey meat. If you're buying a whole turkey, nobody's eating the bones. Okay, nobody is eating the other things that come with it. It is purely the meat that is coming off the leg. So you're going to get about a 60% trim loss on this turkey. So if you're doing the math, if you want four to five ounces finished meat, you need to add, you need to double that plus 10% for the weight of the bird that won't go onto the plate. You get the idea? So this is how we do it as, as a catering gig. This is how you do it as a chef. You start with a calculator with the uh, finished amount that you want people to eat. Then you give trim loss, 
add 60%. Then you give cooking loss as fats render, things like that. And then you take off up to another 40% depending on the fat of the bird. An older bird, more fat, a younger bird, less fat. So it becomes a math problem. And this is really the best way as a caterer not to lose your shirt number one, uh, on an event that you didn't make money on because you had so much food left over and not to lose your shirt at home either and spend all that time putting those leftovers together, hopefully trying to find something to do with them or they just kind of get thrown out. So choose, uh, figure out your portion. That'll give you how much bird you need. If you need 20 pounds, you're going to need an older bird. If you need less than that, you're going to uh, need a smaller bird. But give me, let me give you another suggestion. How about just a turkey breast? If you're feeding a few people, and that's what I'm going to be doing for my two-person Thanksgiving this year, um, it's just a turkey breast. I don't need now, I'm, I'm rid of most of the trim loss now, right? I don't have bones. I don't have legs. I don't have wings. I don't have giblets anymore. Um, I do have rib cage, but consider turkey breast. If you get boneless turkey breast that you're just going to roast, then you're just looking at the cooking loss. If you're looking for a way to better estimate the amount of food you're going to need at the holiday cooking a, a, a turkey and you don't have that many people, a boneless turkey breast gives you the best way to have your portioning and save money in that respect. You don't always have to have the carcass of the bird. But then when you do, <clears throat> let's talk about cooking the bird, all right? The toughest thing about cooking whole birds, whole roasts, big, large pieces of meat, casseroles, even pies, is that it takes long, a long amount of time for the heat to get into the middle of the thing. And it's a dry convective cooking process. Your oven is a dehydrator. Uh, put some lettuce in there. Tell me how it turns out. Does the lettuce turn out nice and, and crisp and moist afterward? No, you would dry the lettuce out. So your oven dries lettuce, your oven dries herbs if you need to on a low temperature, but your oven also dries birds. And this dry convective cooking process, this roasting for hours and hours is how the meat dries out. So the first thing you can do is consider pre-brining a whole bird. And I teach this in my holiday cooking success course. It's a big bucket with, uh, forget, apple, uh, apple cider and a bunch of other really cool stuff. This adds moisture. This adds flavor. This gives you like behind the starting line of it drying out. And it's a lot of fun too to, to get birds that give different apple flavors or bourbon flavors or things like that. It adds moisture. It adds flavor. It will help you with that roasting. The other thing is add fat base strips of bacon uh, or tallow or schmaltz, chicken fat if you have it. You can add fat under the skin to further insulate that bird. Now, it's not going to make it as healthy. What the trick that I like is to add the stuffing under the skin. Don't stuff the cavity of the bird. What you do is you pull the, the skin back. Another thing I show in Holiday Cooking Success Course, um, but I put the stuffing under the skin and on top of the breast meat. This gives tremendous insulation to the breast meat to keep it from drying out, and it gives you a better flavor, I think, to the stuffing than putting it in the cavity. The other advantage to that is it's easier. It's safer cooking with an empty cavity. If you want, if you're already taking a bird that's large and you stuff the cavity, now it's really hard for that heat to get in there. You want to make the driest turkey meat, stuff the cavity, because the breast, which is closer to, closest to the heat, is drying out, drying out, drying out, drying out while you're trying to cook that stuffing. Which, by the way, your stuffing it really isn't raw, is it? I mean, your stuffing doesn't even need to be cooked. But once you put it in the cavity of the bird, it becomes potentially hazardous and it needs to be brought to 180 degrees, which by the time that happens, the breast meat is totally dried out. Change this all around. See what I do in holiday cooking success where I put the, the stuffing under the skin and on top of the breast meat. It's way safer. It's way easier. And lastly, consider that bottom-up cooking method that I teach all the time. Bottom-up cooking method is brown first, then roast. Brown first, then roast. Web cooking classes is based on the four effects of heat on food, gelatinization of starches, coagulation of proteins, evaporation of moisture, and caramelization of sugars. Those are the four effects of heat on food. If you come out of my culinary school class, you better be able to recite that like it's happy birthday.
Like it's the happy birthday song. You better know that cold, okay? Four effects of heat on food. If you take a large bird, and the last one being caramelization of sugars, where things get brown, you take this last large bird, like I just explained, and you subject it to all this heat, 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 and then you go, well, I think it's done, but it's not brown yet. Let's leave it in there longer until it browns up. Good way to dry out the meat. Start the bird at a high temperature, even broil to toast that skin first, then let it go low and slow. Last bit I got for you on cooking the bird, don't baste the bird. This is another myth. You take fat, your, your syringe thing or with a spoon, you pour the fat on top of the turkey, it runs immediately back down onto the bottom of the pan. The loss of temperature every time you open that oven door is not worth squirting fat on top of the turkey. The way to make sure your turkey is finished is with a thermometer. Final internal temperature of a unstuffed bird, 165 Fahrenheit, 74 Celsius at the thickest part, usually between the thigh and the breast. Stuffed bird at the stuffing at 185 degrees Fahrenheit is where, where you wanna go. So, you know, the natural tendency this time of year is to overcook, <laughs> is to overpurchase, buy too much, then overcook it. Then you've got the time that you need to spend with the leftovers. And if you buy a turkey that's too big for your family or for your immediate needs, then it also needs more time and that costs more money. And then it's more resources to cook, right? More electricity or gas. And then it's even more time to deal with the leftovers. This is what makes cooking so hard. People that are freaked out by holiday cooking is because they cook too much. They spend way too much time in the kitchen and half of that time could be cut off. Half of that food could probably be cut off. If you want to make leftovers, make leftovers. Great. But know your portions. Use a calculator. Estimate the amount of food that you are going to need for that meal, just that meal. And if you want leftovers, then do it purposefully. Add 10%, add 20% to the way that you would do it. Have a plan. That's my advice for holiday cooking. And that's the way I would do it as a, have done it as a professional chef. Uh, again, it's a concept that if, if your business is making money from food, you cannot give people twice as much food. If your family's health and your food budget at home uh, you're keeping an eye on it. You can't give people twice as much food either. All right. This is what I want to help you with this year is being thoughtful about it, purchasing the right amount, purchasing the right quality and doing what's right for you, your desires and your budget. All right. Well, let's see what's going on now inside our carefree cooks community. Not, oh, by the way, did you know it is not only for lifetime members of web cooking classes now? That's right. The Carefree Cooks community on Facebook, our private Facebook group to talk about all things cooking and food and the lessons and web cooking classes and tagging me, which I always appreciate. Thank you for showing me what you learned and how you applied it. I, I wake up to a lot of tags in the morning, but it's like my morning newspaper, so I appreciate it. Anyway, uh, Carefree Cooks community is now open to all sauce bosses. Now open to all flame tamers, open to all food finds travelers. Anyone who is enrolled in any of my courses is now invited to join our community. So it's gotten much bigger lately and we've got some really good cooks. Uh, this is Teresa's dish. Teresa is changing her cooking for the fall season. I always appreciate that. Uh, I bet she doesn't make a nice hearty beef stew like this in August. You know? Wouldn't you love this on a cold day? And it's something you can make way ahead of time and let it sit in, uh, on a low simmer on your stove. Make it a day. The longer it cooks, the better it always gets. Uh, oh, Bill picked up on my ramekin portioning trick. Uh, he's creating individual chicken Alfredo dishes. How cool is that? Anything baked and bubbling in a ramekin is great in my book. Another key to portioning. Uh, when we talk about the holidays, what if you use this trick and, and had little ramekins? It's so much easier to portion by the each than it is by weight, how many ounces somebody's going to eat or so on. Uh, Jim is taking stock, uh, uh, stocking up. The selling stocks. No, no, no. Wait, he's making stocks. That's what I meant to say. Uh, this is his first time, right? 
uh, he's trying to buy, uh, make a darker stock and he finally figured out the most important part, uh, two most important parts, high collagen bones. Look at those bones, them bones, them bones. They're gonna make a good stock and roasting everything in the oven to brown it first. Two keys to a darker stock, which leads to a darker looking and flavored gra gravy. Uh, speaking of making stock, Catherine whipped up this chicken soup that I'm sure is gonna melt any icy toes or fingers that you might have outside from the cold. It starts with a scratch made chicken stock. I mean, you just can't beat it. Everybody's asking, oh, what's the best, how do I make the best chicken? It's by making your own stock. It's really that, that simple. Uh, oh, Guy's getting a jump on all the holiday sauces and gravies that he's going to be making. He's preparing his dark roux ahead of time now. And then when you've got a nice dark roux in your pantry, it becomes a pantry ingredient. You just drop it into some simmering stock and you got that nice quick sauce. I should put Guy and Jim together. Jim's got the stock. Guy's got the roux. Jim Guy sauce. Jim Guy sauce. Hey, this is delicious. What is it? It's Jim Guy sauce. Uh, look, I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited about all the, oh, that sounded so strange now. <laughs> I'm really excited about all the great cooking coming your way. And I want you to know that I want to be here to help you as much as I can. So by the time that New Year's party is over, okay, by the time it's 20, oh my God, by the time it's 2022, I want you to look back on this holiday season and I want you to go, oh my goodness, that was the best food I ever had. Take pictures of it. Be, be able to look back and remember what you did well and what you can do better. And we can do that together. We, we can definitely do that together. I'm here to help you. Uh, let's get let's get back. Uh, there it is. Ooh. Let's get back to the uh, what am I for today or what's that thing? <laughs> I like that title better. Well, what's the fleshy thing on the turkey called? Anybody know? It's a snood. S-N-O-O-D, it's a snood. There's another joke you can tell a four-year-old, right? They'll appreciate that. Uh, look, if you know someone who's confused by all the words and the labels that are attached to poultry, but they want to have a great holiday turkey this year, please like, please love, please share this video with them so they can gobble it up. I thought I was going to make it through without a bad pun. Um, and look, if you're serious about wanting to create the best holiday meal ever with precision and confidence, without stressing out over the holiday dinner, without feeling like the caterer instead of a family member, you should register now for my free online class that's gonna show you exactly how to plan, cook, bake, coordinate, and use leftovers creatively. If you go to webcookingclasses.com slash success for my holiday cooking success course, just in time uh, for us to all stay home and cook great stuff for the holiday, right? Uh, thank you so much for being with me once again, everyone. I so appreciate these Tuesdays together. I will be popping up live, I'm sure, on Wednesday. Thursday at 6 p.m. We'll have the cook and chat again. Until then, it's Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your holiday cooking success. Bye, everyone.